Well, folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel here after uh, kind of a, a tough middle of the winter season, but we're back in business. And, and uh, today we're here to load a brass shotgun shell and go through the steps to do that. Uh, I'm Todd Kessner here in Bozeman, Montana, and I uh, just want to talk a little bit about brass shotgun shells today. So there's a lot of misinformation on the, the history really of the brass shotgun shell and also along with the with the paper shotgun shell and I won't say I have it all straight but from what I can what I can figure out uh, from multiple sources and and uh, just really looking through a lot of old books too uh, it, it appears as if the the paper shot shell uh, came out considerably more early uh, than the brass shot shell and so when you uh, when you see movies and, and people talk about wanting to look authentic and that sort of thing in that uh, in, in the old west period particularly uh, they go to the brass shotgun shell thinking that was what was available and in reality the pinfire shotgun shell started clear back in 1836 uh, paper case in Europe and uh, that paper case shell had a pin sticking out of the side of it and I'll put one up on the screen a hammer would hit that pin it would go inside of the case where there was a uh, percussion cap held inside there ignite that percussion cap and ignite the shot shell and by 1861 that had turned into a center fire paper shotgun shell. Uh, one of the drawbacks of paper was they, when they originally started coming out they were just a, a rolled glued paper around a mandrel uh, but weren't waxed and so if they got wet you just had a, a sloppy mess, your powder got wet and your, and your shell was ruined. So they become a lot more popular, the paper shells became a lot more popular when they got waxed and that process was, was perfected. But with the brass shotgun shell, uh, it wasn't until the end of the 1860s that the, the brass rifle shells uh, were, were being drawn. And so uh, you see a lot of rimfire copper uh, in the early 1860s, early eight, or 1860s, early 1870s. And then you see us going to brass as an industry uh, as the technology to draw a brass shotgun shell. We previously had to be milled out of a solid piece of brass, if you can believe that. And the amount of, of brass it would take, um, of course you'd reuse the scraps, but still the amount of work it would take to make a brass shotgun shell when it had to be milled uh, was considerable. When the, when the process was perfected to draw a brass shotgun shell became a whole lot more, whole lot more popular. But in reality, paper, uh, shotgun shells and brass shotgun shells really on the market at the same time and I've got a, uh, a copy of an old ammunition catalog that I'll throw on the screen too, the page that advertises shotgun shells and you will see that you could uh, buy either paper or you could buy brass at the same time and I believe that catalogs from 1875 so uh, interesting stuff the uh, modern brass shotgun shell uh, this these are from Magtech that I've got today and uh, built very much the the traditional old-fashioned way you'll see it's got a primer pocket for a large pistol primer and it doesn't take much to ignite black powder and you, you would know that because of the uh, flint locks that uh, had no problem igniting black powder with just a spark. It does not take a large shotgun primer to ignite black powder. It's kind of overkill when you use a 209 primer. So these shells are for kind of a more traditional regular primer. It takes not much to uh, to ignite that powder so that's all you need. Uh, so we'll, we'll prime these things. One of the advantages you will read about a brass shotgun shell Historically, uh, and it's from and it's from uh, you know contemporary or modern uh, authors a lot of times is the, the brass was so popular because it was nearly indestructible, and you could use it dozens and dozens of times to reload it uh, and just keep on using brass. Brass lasted forever. Uh, in my experience brass will crack on you and black powder burns extremely hot and if you have any kind of crimp in particular on a brass shotgun shell uh, you'll see a little bit of a of a crack start on the rim you can load it one more time and that crack will go clear down into the shell and then that piece of brass is is basically worthless so the first step that I always take it, it, and some folks don't even crimp them so that that's that's a possibility as well I like the idea of a crimp top because it holds that overshot wad in a little bit better and I'm not going to fire one barrel and have my shell fall apart on my second barrel and to basically have a, a squib load on that second barrel. So I like to crimp a little bit and keep that shot in place and if you do that when, it, when the shot comes out the crimp doesn't completely come out but it bends back out somewhat. 
And if you don't anneal these things and soften this edge on top, uh, that's where those cracks begin. So you have a lot better chance of using this time after time if you do indeed anneal the top of the, of the brass cartridge. Get it soft so that when, when part of that crimp comes back out at discharge, uh, you don't have that crack develop and, uh, and ruin that shell eventually. So that's the first thing we're gonna do, get set up here with the uh, soldering torch, uh, do a little annealing, and then we'll move over to loading the brass shotgun shell in as close to historically correct fashion as I can. All right, so we've got my, my uh, OSHA approved setup deal here and uh, uh, an unannealed uh, brass case. I just got a, a wooden dowel in my drill and I've fitted that wooden dowel, the end of it, so it goes up in the primer pocket and it doesn't last very long because the, the shell will get hot and it seems to reshape the primer pocket just a little bit. My, my wood gets burnt. So I've got to almost do it straight up and down so that this thing doesn't spin off uh, too early. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the flame. And start getting this case heated up here. And brass is absolutely the opposite of, of steel. And so, get it sped up a little bit here. Eh, a little too much. So if you had a, uh, if you heat steel, anybody that's done any blacksmithing would know, and you put it in, in a cold water, it's gonna get harder. And brass is just the opposite of that. Brass will get hard as you work it. Steel will too. The brass will get hard as you work it, and it gets very, very brittle. And I got to pay a lot of attention to the the very end, uh, top neck of the case, because that's the part where a split's going to start. And once you split it, uh, you just throw it in the recycle bin. So you can see the difference in coloration uh, where I've been annealing and then below that where I haven't. And so we're just gonna get this nice and warm. We want this thing to expand to the chamber walls too. Get us a nice gas seal. When we've got this thing going off. So these are two and a half inch cases. Uh, that's just the way they come. So you don't have to worry about trimming it if you, have a, if you had a three quarter, two and three quarter inch case and then needed to, uh, wanted to trim that back to two and a half English length. They come in English length, two and a half inches, so that no matter uh, really what shotgun you've got, you'll be able to make these things work. So there, it's pretty even, pretty good. Drop her in there. Yeah, even my dowel's getting hot. So with those things uh, properly annealed and quickly cooled, I can uh, get those dried off and then go to uh, go over to my sizing die and start the process of of getting these things reloaded. All right, I got to do things just a little bit differently uh, with a brass case than I would with the paper case. Uh, one of the first things is that the the paper case has got a thicker wall to it, and it just makes sense. The the brass, uh, of course, is more rigid material, so it doesn't need to have as thick of a wall. And so I've got to use a different uh, cushion wad so I get a good seal, and a different shot wad so I get a good seal, uh, which I can use. I've got a, a Circle Fly 12 gauge cushion wad that I can use on this brass case. If I use it in a paper case, it fits tight enough that it actually starts to bulge that case a little bit and swells it out and you have a hard time chambering. Uh, you sometimes can't even chamber it. But in the walls of a thin walls of a of a little brass case, like the little walled thin walled brass case uh, fits right in there just like it would if you were pushing it down the barrel of a muzzle loading shotgun. So I've got to have a little bit uh, of an adaptation on my a change on my on my wads and so if you if you do this and want to order wads for a brass case make sure that you don't get one that's made for a paper case and then it's going to be too small uh, in diameter and it's not going to give you any kind of a gas seal so that's one of the differences uh, between the two the other thing is you got to resize it uh, the case itself uh, sometimes uh, in order to get it uh, back in the gun again so what I've got is a RCBS 12 gauge 
uh, reloading die uh, made particularly for, for brass. And on the bottom, this is a little resizing cowlet. Now, I don't know if it's because I haven't put uh, full heavy duty power loads in these or what, but I've seldom had to really worry too much about resizing them. But we'll give it a shot anyway. It's got to get it centered here. And then it goes up through that. And there's hardly any resistance at all. So uh, just kind of do it sometimes just as a just as a habit, just to make sure that we don't have a problem. Uh, but really not needing to uh, resize these things. Yeah, that one didn't even have any resistance to it whatsoever. So that was that, one, that one's already primed. Try one of these guys over here and make sure I got these. Yeah, no resistance whatsoever. So I haven't had a, a bad expansion problem. That one's got, that one needed a, just a hair. Uh, and as I said in the, in the introduction, these will just take a large pistol primer. Don't need a magnum or anything like that. I know it's a pretty good size uh, charge of black powder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these what we call a three dram equivalent, which would be about 82 grains of black powder. And uh, get that back out of there. There we go. Heavy load would be three and a half, which would be more like 90, 95, 96 grains. Uh, a dram is, um, what, 27.34 grains. And so uh, just a larger measurement for uh, for grains, instead of going grains, you could go drams and it would be 27.34 grains per dram. So now I've got a seated uh, primer. And you don't really usually do a ton of these and so they don't have it set up for an automatic primer. But I can easily get that. That one needs to go in here more. There we go. Easily get that primer in there. It's going to go ahead and do a few of these while we're at it. Get them primed. So I have not loaded them up to that three and a half dram heavy load. That would be a heavy, heavy honey load, uh, about nearly 100 grains into the 95 grain area anyway. Um, so at uh, at 80 grains, haven't really shown them that they uh, they've expanded too much enough for that that cowlet underneath here to really work very hard. If they if you were expanding them a lot. I uh, definitely would lube the cases and uh, have not lubed the cases because it just has not been enough resistance here at all. So I'm going to go ahead and take this collet out of here. I'm not going to size these in anymore. So this can come out off the bottom of the case. One thing you'll notice is the, the size of this thing. If you've got a RCBS reloader, single stage reloader, you can just pull out the, the, the center cowlet that's in here uh, and it leaves a bigger hole. And then this die, this 12 gauge die, goes right straight into the, the reloader itself uh, without that extra threaded piece uh, in between. So you, if you're gonna get a 12 gauge reloading die, make sure you've got a reloader that has uh, a cowlet in here that can screw out for a regular die and leave a bigger hole for the for the 12 gauge die. So I've got the powder measure set up. Let's transition over to that. We'll put some powder in these and uh, then some uh, wads and shot. Put a crimp on it and we'll be ready to go. All right, so I'm going to use a, a powder measure that's made for, for black powder uh, reloading. This is, this is a Lyman black powder powder measure. And the, the differences with this between this and a regular uh, powder measure for smokeless is that it's aluminum and brass and it does, does not conduct any kind of a spark. And uh, uh, 
I'm also kind of conscious about what I'm what I'm wearing when I'm working with black powder reloading as well because I have noticed there are uh, some high, high performance fabrics out there that are pri primarily uh, polyester polypropylene and uh, you know as you sweat it pulls the moisture away from your skin and, and it's great for hunting and that sort of thing but I also found it's also full of static and uh, if you're at all my age and you remember back when your mother would put you in poly polyester pajamas especially the ones with fire retardant in them and you could rub your knees up and down the inside of the uh, inside of the uh, sheets when you go to bed and you can make an electric storm and that's that's also kind of what I, I find when I'm wearing some of these uh, sweatshirts and long johns and things that are that are polyester uh, you know how easy black powder will ignite it just takes a spark the the entire flintlock era would would prove that uh, maybe i'm a little paranoid but i'd rather be paranoid than, than have an accident and so uh, a lot of times i'll wear a, a cotton or wool and i'm out here in the garage and so uh dress a little warmer than i would be if i was in where i'm doing my other reloading uh, which is inside the house and so uh, just think about that i don't you know i don't know it hasn't happened i don't want it to happen um, so i'm just a little conscious of not wearing something that seems to build up that static. Uh, you can see the old powder or the regular powder measure for, for smokeless has got some plastic and things on it. Won't find that on a black powder powder measure. And uh, also using the drop tube here, I just didn't take it off. Uh, particularly important if you're loading any kind of a rifle shell, pistol shell, uh, a 24 inch drop tube, the black powder will come down through the tube and it will settle in the case for you uh, nice and even. So that sometimes if you just pour black powder into a case you know the bottom can be dense the top could be a lot looser vice versa however fast you poured it and those sorts of things this helps compact it a little bit uh, not quite as is important on a great big wide shell like this but definitely important on, on rifle and pistol so i've got this this set at uh, a three dram weight which would be uh, 27.34 grains uh, per dram so we're looking at about 82 grains of, of of uh, double F black powder uh, from GoX. And so that's gonna give me kind of a medium field load, uh, a little more comfortable. I've been loading about three and a half drams, which puts me more in the 94, 95 grain area. Uh, that's quite a load, that, that, that hit pretty hard. And if you watch the uh, Remington, shooting the 89 Remington uh, videos, you'd see if the slow motion part in particular, just about folds you in half. And uh, believe me, after doing a, a round of skeet with those shells and then hunting, hunting with them as well, a uh, little bit of a little bit of a little bit of overkill there. So I backed it off to three drams. Uh, these I feel good shooting in the WW Greener shotgun as well. I've shot three drams through that already. So we're going to go ahead and drop some powder uh, in the case and, uh, and then move on to the wad. So I'm just going to tap that a couple times, get some to settle down into the measure, let it go down my drop tube. There we go and get some powder in that. I might as well do a couple of them while I'm at it. Get that down in there. Been throwing a pretty consistent load. I've been uh, weighing these as I was setting it up and I got it to where I'm pretty happy with the, with the consistency that this powder measure is throwing. There we go. So now I've got uh, my 82 grains of powder in the shell and we're going to move over here to the uh, to the reloading die and get a little bit of compression on this thing all right so i've got a i've got a 12 gauge compression compression die and uh, just noticed all of the lube that it's got on it from compressing uh, compressing wads that are uh, lube for black powder but uh, let me get that off of there uh, so it's, it's um, the die. This die top comes with uh, with the die itself, and then you you put in the uh, depriming stick or or piston. In this case, I've gone ahead and pulled that out, and I've ordered a, a 12, 10 or 12 gauge. It'll go either way. Uh, compression die uh, for this instead and so I pull out the decapper and uh, and put this in I've got it set up for the for the depth that I want and that just goes right down inside the top of this die and uh, remember I took the took the collet out of there that uh, that's re uh, uh, resizes your brass case and so now I'm gonna 
take a couple of. Uh, you got to kind of play around with this a little bit because it's uh, you basically want to fill your case up, and that's the that's the biggest objective is to get this all about the right depth here, so that so that when you uh, put your shot in. It's right up to the near the top of the case. So I've got my two overshot wads, and now I'm going to put, or excuse me, my over powder wads. Now I'm going to put my overshot wad in there. Nice tight tight fit on that, and I'm going to go ahead and compress this. And I don't compress it a whole lot, but this is nice and consistent that way. And now that's going to give me a, a cushion wad that I can put the put that put the shot on top of. So I'm just using a regular shotgun reloader. It's just a handy way of measuring your shot. So I am going to uh, put some shot in here just, just as you would if you're loading a plastic shell. And I want to get that really, really close to the top because the idea here is I'm going to put a, uh, an over shot wad on there and then crimp that over shot wad tight on top of that shot so I don't have a lot of rattle. Uh, and so that, that keeps everything nice and uh, tight in there and when you if you're shooting a double barrel and you shoot one one side you don't end up rattling the other side loose so we don't want a lot of a lot of give so I've got another one there again this is seven and a half is what I got in here now and one and one eighth ounce there we go so we can go to the for the final step here, which is crimping in the overshot wad. Uh, we'll have to go back to the other the other uh, press in that uh, 12 gauge reloading die. So we're back at the rock chucker set here with my RCBS 12 gauge die, and I'm going to pull this compression die back out of here. Uh, this is normally where you just, you put the stem of your decapper. Uh, through the hole in here, so it's in with this particular die set. It's actually got a, a nut on the top and the bottom that kind of holds it in place in the spring, and what and so it's not threaded. The hole's not threaded, so I had to put this threaded die stem through here and put a nut on the top and the bottom in order to hold it in place. Nice thing is though now I've got it set so if I screw it back in, uh, I can just keep using it for additional cases. Um, but just had to figure out a way to keep this thing from sliding up and down uh, in this non-threaded hole and that was just putting a nut on the top and another one on the bottom. So now we're going to do a crimp. So I've got a, another collet that slides in the top of this die and that is going to give me a crimp and how much crimp you want kind of depends on you can either slide the die up and down and reset it down there or you can just move this thing up and down. The nice thing about a shotgun crimp uh, with, with this type of setup, if I don't think I've got it crimped enough, I can just twist it a little bit and crimp it a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and put a over shot wad on top of this and put the, give that the crimp that I like. And that'll crimp it right, right around the top of that shot wad, over shot wad, and uh, we'll hold that a little bit tighter. I'm actually gonna put a little more crimp on that. I notice how much that's still kind of wiggling around in there. Crimp that just a hair more. And you'd be surprised how much the manufacturers, when they were selling um, brass cartridges, and I'll, I'll put a picture up on the screen, uh, how much they crimped them. I mean, they crimped them pretty hard. And so uh, if you're in the camp that you don't want to crimp them because you don't want to uh, stress the brass like that, uh, the, the original manufacturers, manufacturers did indeed crimp these pretty, pretty severe uh, to hold that, hold that over shot wad in. So I got just a little little bit of give in, in there and I want to have that as tight as I can get it. So I got two ways of cheating uh, when my shot is not quite up to the top of the case or I mean I, I could uh, just a just a hair's more shot in there uh, to bring it up to the top of the case. So I got two ways of cheating. I can actually go grab a uh, some shot, dump a little bit in my hand and, and uh, cheat a little bit by by putting a little more shot on top of this or I can just put two over shot wads and that will do the same thing and that will give me that little extra fill up that little extra space that seems to be between my 
get it down in there just a hair between the top of my case uh, and the crimp let's see if that's going to work that's the plan here see if we can crimp that double shot wad yeah perfect so I just put another another card over the top over the over shot wad over the top now I've got I mean it is solid that's the way you want it you don't want a lot of rattle uh, that was the easiest way to cheat that time around than dumping a little more just dropping a few more pieces of shot in there um, put that second put that second over shot wad on top and we're ready to go so uh, that's the basics of it I do like to put uh, just a bead of glue around here and that is uh, again just gives it just a little bit more rigidity when you fire one barrel and you want the other barrel to stay put the last thing you want is your shot wad to come out over shot wad to come out and then you lose all your shot down the barrel uh, so I put just a just a bead around the inside to hold that together and I'm just using Elmer's school glue just handy around the house uh, water glass is, is a glue that's more common to the 1800s uh, and uh, you can get you can still get that at craft stores even at, uh, at a pharmacy uh, that'd be just a little more historically correct uh, you know what ha happens to Elmer's glue especially school glue if it gets wet obviously it's not going to give me a lot of water protection moisture protection but it gives you just enough that it, uh, if, if you get a raindrop on it it's not going down inside your case uh, you drop them in the water you got it you got problems but uh, but overall if you don't soak it in water this stuff works just as good it's a nice easy sol soluble glue to use because the other consideration is when you get into something you know you want you can epoxy these things if you want you also got to remember all that crud's going down your barrel uh, and when it gets heated who knows what kind of deposits that's putting in your barrel so i like elmer's glue it, it's not as strong uh, but the upside is never any residue in the barrel or at least there's nothing in there to clean that i can't handle so that's the uh, that's the method for doing a, a brass shotgun shell you know the the same idea as any other kind of shotgun shell difference would be uh, you have to anneal it if you want it to last very long uh, resize it uh, if you've got a heavy load and as you saw I seldom have to even resize them really do it just to be just to be safe um, other than that you put up a, a wad column so that your shot tries to fill up the case as close as you can get it and uh, then you put in an overshot wad just like you would if we were doing a roll crimp on a on a paper cartridge difference being i'm going to crimp this brass and i need to have a rcbs 12 gauge die in order to to do it uh, you can load brass shotgun shells with without any kind of die system and that would just be by putting your overshot wad in the case and gluing it in place and uh, and hopefully that's enough strength to hold it uh, from falling apart on you and a lot of folks if you didn't crimp them that's what a lot of folks would do is is uh, without the die set just be able to historically just be able to load in a shot a wad column shot uh, over shot wad and glue it and and call it good so we've crimped them a little bit and taken advantage of this particular die set and we'll take these things out to the out to the range as soon as the weather turns a little bit nicer and see what kind of pattern we get out of a good old-fashioned brass shotgun shell that, that pretty much is on the market concurrently with with paper so with that I want to thank you again for coming and uh, picking up some tips on how to load a brass 12 gauge shotgun shell if you like the video please hit the subscribe button also hit that thumbs up button that helps us as well uh, I really appreciate uh, you folks watching these videos and subscribing and commenting and having a good time from what I'm uh, what we're doing and we will continue uh, throughout the winter here and see what the weather does try to get back out to the range as, as soon as we can uh, but again thanks for watching the frontier western heritage youtube channel okay, are you just seeing my face are you seeing my shoulders or all the way down to here oh okay there's a second let me start that over i couldn't think of the name of the thing measurer so I'm just using a regular shotgun uh, reloader, which is just a handy way of, of measuring out your shot. You can, uh, you can, uh, let me start it over. I don't know what I can do.
there's no threads. It just moves up and down. Uh, it's got a spring underneath it and, and um, uh, shoot, what do you call those things? Ah! What? It's a little clippy on thing. The, now we're going. Okay. So we're back at the, are you ready? Quit knocking my stuff down. Yeah. So with that, I just want to uh, thank you again. For, blah, 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 blah.